Hello everybody, I'm Shinobu and this is another LOD raid guide for the Alakir encounter within the Throne of the Four Winds. Today we'll be covering every detail you need to know. If you wish to see other raid blast guides, make sure to visit our YouTube channel as well as our blog for more detailed information. Alakir is an overall difficult encounter with heavy mobility involved. It also has a really strong DPS check and you should not attempt this fight until you have gained some gear from other easier raid bosses. The fight is split into three main phases. Phase 1 lasts until 80% health and is perhaps the easiest one. During this phase, Alec here will summon a line of 7 tornadoes that will slowly spin around the room. One of the tornadoes will be randomly missing from this, which leaves an opening that you must run through. If you get hit by any of these tornadoes, you'll be rendered useless for about 10 seconds and receive a lot of damage, so make sure you avoid them at all costs. He will also spawn a blizzard that leaves a trail of frost behind it. Anybody who stands in the blizzard will be slowed and receive extra damage over time, so try to avoid this unless you absolutely need to stand in it to avoid a tornado. His main ability here is called Windburst, a very long cast that will knock back all raid members. Anybody who is not in melee range will be thrown off the platform and will be rendered useless for about 10 seconds while receiving additional damage. Make sure you are always in melee range to avoid getting thrown off. He will also cast Static Shock on random raid members located near his hitbox. Static Shock will interrupt casts and deal 1k damage per second for about 8 seconds. So if you are a healer or a ranged DPS, it is important to avoid being right next to him unless you are moving close for the windburst. Finally, he will cast Electrocute on the tank if the tank is out of range. Electrocute is a channeled ability that deals a considerable amount of damage. Your tank should only move out of melee range to avoid tornadoes and charge back in quickly to ensure your healers don't have a hard time keeping him up. Phase 1 boils down to dodging the tornadoes, the blizzard, and moving in for wind burst in time. The first time you attempt this fight, it may seem overwhelming, but practice is the trick here. Eventually you will learn how to time everything properly and avoid dangerous abilities. Once you reach 80%, Phase 2 will begin. Phase 2 is a strong DPS check as he will cast Acid Rain on all your raid members. Acid Rain is a stacking debuff that deals damage over time, starting with 500 and slowly rising until it reaches unhealable levels. Your goal is to push the next phase before Acid Rain wipes your group. He will stop casting Windburst and Blizzard, and will start to summon Stormlings, which are adds that AoE nearby targets and spawn every 20 seconds. Whenever one of these Stormlings die, Alakir will receive a debuff called Feedback, which increases all damage he takes by 10% and stacks. The key to this phase is to kill the Stormlings in a timely fashion to make sure you stack the feedback debuff and maximize the damage on Alakir. You must do this correctly in order to push phase 3 before the acid rain wipes your group. We discovered that it's best to let 3 Stormlings spawn before you kill any, and then kill one at a time when feedback has between 10 to 5 seconds left on it. This way you will manage to increase the damage that Alakir takes by up to 70 to 80%. You should use Heroism sometime around the 5th stack of feedback, and use all your big DPS cooldowns before it's too late. During Phase 2, there will also be tornadoes spinning around the platform, just like in Phase 1, so make sure you are constantly aware of their position and avoid getting hit by them at all costs. Being useless for 10 seconds is significant in this phase, and increased damage you take can very easily make the healers fall behind and wipe your group. Finally, at 25%, you'll begin Phase 3. Alakir will place a debuff on your entire raid group, allowing them to fly at 300% increased movement speed. This phase is relatively simple compared with the other two, and as long as you execute it properly, you should not have many issues handling it. The most important part of this phase is to ensure that your entire group is flying around the same level, since he will spawn a lightning cloud on that level. Just like Maligo's encounter in Phase 3, anybody who stands in the cloud would pretty much die quickly. You will need to wait until a cloud is cast, then move up or down a level, as a group, to ensure that no clouds spawn in weird areas. While being on the same level as your goal, you should never stack up because he will often cast Chain Lightning and a Lightning Rod debuff, which makes the target of it deal massive damage to nearby allies. Your healers will need to heal this person as well, otherwise the target will die. Finally, he will cast Windburst again, except this time it will hit for 40k damage every time and knock back all your members. 
You should move back into position, since being away from the boss will trap you into a relentless storm, which will instantly kill you. To succeed on this phase, you will need to move as a team. You need to be close enough for your healers to keep you up, but spread out enough to minimize chain lightning and lightning rod damage, and all of this while being on the same height, ready to move from a cloud instantly. You have now completed the Alec here encounter. Congratulations! This was Shinobu, bringing you another LOD Cataclysm Raid boss guide. If you want to see other boss guides, make sure to check both our channel and our website, and feel free to join our blog to participate in our discussions. Both links can be found in the description box below. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching!